Welcome to Software Freedom Day. I'm Richard Stallman. I started the free software movement in September 1983, a movement for freedom for people who use software. A program is free software if it respects the user's freedom. It's free as in freedom. We don't mean zero price. We're actually not talking about price at all. We're talking about your freedom. If a program is not free, we call it non-free software, proprietary software, user subjugating software. Because this software puts the users under somebody's unjust power. So what does it mean for software to respect your freedom? There are four essential freedoms which make the definition of free software. Freedom zero is the freedom to run the program as you wish. Freedom one is the freedom to study the source code and change it so the program does your computing as you wish. Freedom two is the freedom to help others. That's the freedom to redistribute exact copies of the program when you wish. And freedom three is the freedom to contribute to your community. That's the freedom to distribute copies of your modified versions to others when you wish. All four freedoms are essential in order for the users to have control over the software they use. And that's what this is about. With software, either the users control the program or the program controls the users. When the users control the program, that's free software. When the program controls the users, that's proprietary software. When I started the free software movement, I announced the goal of developing the GNU operating system, a system meant to be entirely free software. And that's the crucial point, because if a system is entirely free software, if all the software you use is free, then you have control over your computing. But if you use some proprietary software, then you don't fully control your computing and someone else has unjust power over you. So, as the first stage, we were going to develop a complete free operating system because you can't do anything with your computer without an operating system. The idea of GNU was to be a Unix-like system, and the name GNU means GNU's not Unix. So, by 1992, we had almost all of the GNU system, but one major piece was missing. That was the kernel. We were working on a kernel, but that project hasn't been a great success. But in 1992, Mr. Torvalds made his kernel Linux free software. And so the combination of GNU plus Linux made the first free operating system for a long time, the first one that would run, for instance, on a PC or clone. And it's the GNU plus Linux system that many of us are now using. Of course, it's not enough just to have the operating system, which is the a collection of hundreds or thousands of programs to do the usual things be free. In order to have freedom, you need to insist on free applications, free utilities, free whatever it might be. And that's where our community has, to a large extent, forgotten the issue. Because many people who use GNU plus Linux put non-free applications on top of it or non-free drivers underneath it and that means they don't reach freedom. Most of our community looks at the convenience of the GNU slash Linux system and doesn't make freedom the goal, which is why we need events to focus on this issue of freedom. But we need to teach people what this means in practice. There are hundreds perhaps thousands of different distros of GNU slash Linux. And most of them actually come with or suggest installing non-free software. They are not, even though they are versions of a basically free operating system GNU slash Linux, most of the distros are not in fact 
composed of free software. There are parts that are free and parts that are proprietary, so they don't get you to freedom. Overlooking this means our community is not going straight towards freedom, it's going off at an angle, and if you follow that other road, you don't get to the destination of freedom. So we need to focus our community's attention on installing entirely free distros and you can find a list of them in gnu.org slash distros. Among the proprietary applications that people often make the sad mistake of using on top of their freedom respecting GNU plus Linux system, it's our noteworthy two examples there is the Adobe Flash Player, which is not only proprietary, it's malicious. It has two known malicious features. There are digital restrictions management features to restrict what the user does with the data in her own computer. And there is a surveillance feature that we call Super Cookies, which allows one site to write some information into the flash player and another site can then read it and there is nothing to stop multiple sites from cross identifying the user so this is malicious software the other noteworthy example is Skype Skype is proprietary software and you have no idea what it's doing What's really bad about these two, what makes them so, what makes them such big problems is that people are invited to use formats that pressure other people to use the same proprietary software. For instance, if you put a Skype user ID in your mail signature, you're saying in every message, use Skype, Skype is good, even though it's proprietary software, it's good. Well, if you say that, you're saying the exact opposite of the free software movement, which says, watch for your freedom. Don't use these non-free programs because they take away your freedom. Another thing which leads people to overlook this issue is the fact that both of those programs are available gratis. They're gratis, but they're not free software. And price is not as important as freedom don't accept gratis as a substitute for respecting your freedom. For more information about the GNU system, look at gnu.org. And for more information about the free software movement, look at fsf.org. That's the website of the Free Software Foundation. You'll find resources there, and you can also join the Free Software Foundation or get onto informational mailing lists. Thanks for supporting freedom.